For this project, I picked up a 14 by 17 inch frame at a garage sale. I took the backing off, I took the glass out, I cleaned the glass up, I cleaned the frame up, and then I took Elmer's glue and put it around the inside of the perimeter of the frame where the glass would sit. Then I replaced the glass and then I put more Elmer's glue around the perimeter of the frame on top of the glass or kind of in the crack where the glass doesn't quite touch the, the wood there. And I let it dry for 24 hours. Then I came back again and the next day and I put another layer of Elmer's glue around just as an extra precaution to help prevent any resin leaks. So it serves two purposes. It helps prevent resin leaks and it holds the glass in place so that you can flip the frame over and work on it. I was up at a store called At Home and I saw this cute little bunny hanging on a rack and I took a photograph of him, brought it home, pr printed it out, cut it out, and then taped it to the back of the glass in the frame. Then I had these pretty pinkish red beads that I had picked up at Michael's. They were kind of sparkly and I put them in all the areas, the pink areas of his feet and his ears and I decided I was going to make his ears t tall standing up instead of flipped over like that and I put some on his cheeks and his nose and then for some reason I decided I was going to adhere all of this with resin. I, always, I also used two stones for the eyes and I don't know why I chose to use resin but for some reason I did you could put it with you could have put Elmer's glue down liquid nails silicone caulk anything but for some reason I chose <laughs> resin the resin I used for this project was art resin when I work with resin I wear gloves I use a respirator you're supposed to do it in a well ventilated area the art resin is a one-to-one -one ratio resin, one part resin to one part hardener. When you first put it in the cup together, it's clear. As you start to mix it, it becomes cloudy. And after about three minutes of mixing, it becomes clear again and it's ready to put on your project. The slower you mix it, the less bubbles you'll get. You're supposed to scrape the sides and the bottom as you're mixing to assure thorough mixing and then you're ready to put it on your project. Then I just drizzled it over the beads sl slowly and carefully so as not to knock any of the beads out of place, and then I let that part dry overnight. Now for the next part of this project, I used something called Celestial Fire Glass. Now you can use any kind of clear fire glass for this. And then I took Artist Loft Iridescent Medium that I picked up at Michael's. You can also get this online. And it's kind of like a paint, real thick paint. And I mix that in with the fire glass thoroughly. Then I took parchment paper. You need some kind of non-stick paper because it will dry to it and stick to it if you don't. And I took these, this iridescent fire glass now and spread it out all over the parchment paper on the counter. And as you're spreading it out, you have to kind of, um, as you're putting it out, you kind of have to spread it out because it will stick together if you were just to leave it in a clump. So you have to spread it out and separate it as much as possible. And then you have to let this dry overnight. And then once it's dry, you have to kind of scrape it up and separate it from the paper and crumble it up and separate it from each other because some of them will stick together if they are touching each other while they're drying. That's why it's in your best interest to move them as far apart from each other as you can. And this is what it looks like compared to the celestial glass. It's real pretty. Next, I took Elmer's glue and just worked in small sections at a time and put the glue down in the glass and then the glass down over it and continued on all the way up to the top. And this is probably about one minute showing you what took me probably about an hour. And as I proceeded up to the ear, I must have stopped taping before I did the right ear. But I think you get the gist of it. 
Next, I use something called vitrograph glass. This is long strings of glass that are kind of twirly, and I use them for the whiskers and the smile on the face, on his face, and I glued it down with regular Elmer's glue, and it held just fine. So prior to making the rib, I had purchased a set of Easter egg molds off of Amazon. And at this point, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with them. But uh, as long as I had them, I was going to do some experimenting and see which way they turned out better. So I took a bunch of different colors of regular acrylic paint and I used this little, at first I was going to try to use the paintbrush, but I used this little dot tool. I'm not really sure what you call it, but I would just dip it in the acrylic paint and try to get it in all those little grooves. And yes, this was pretty time consuming and you have to be patient to do it, but um, I went ahead and filled in all the little grooves with the little dot tool. Now, although I do not have it on film, the gray egg uh, resin mold, I use the mica powder that you see in the far right corner there. This mica powder I had purchased on Amazon also. And they have some really pretty colors. And what I did was I did the same thing as I'm doing with the acrylic paint, only I just used powder and I dipped that little tool into the powder and it stuck to the end of it and I did all the little dots and all the little grooves and um, pretty much the same way as I'm doing it with the acrylic paint here. Next I set out a bunch of little cups that I'm going to put resin, mix resin and put resin in and then mix the mica powder in it to make different colored eggs. So when I use resin, I wear gloves, I wear a respirator. You're supposed to do it in a well-ventilated area. I open the window. For this project, I'm using art resin. Art resin is a one-to-one -one ratio resin. When you first put it in the cup, it's clear. You start to mix it. It becomes cloudy. After about three minutes of mixing, it becomes clear again, and it's ready to work with. The slower you mix it, the less bubbles you'll get and you're supposed to scrape the bottom and the sides to assure proper mixing. So then I just start pouring the resin into the little cups and I use the mica powder to color each individual cup of resin a different color. I wanna make a bunch of different color eggs and see how they turn out. And this mica powder is so bright and pretty. Now, if you have old resin that you have to use up or some resin that's already started to yellow in the container, if you're going to color your resin, this would be the perfect opportunity to use it. And actually, I had some old resin that I should have used up. I wasn't thinking at the time. Instead of using the art resin that's less likely to yellow, I should have used like the total boat resin or something else. But anyway, um, so this is what I did, and I just made a bunch of bright colored eggs. And um, I really like working with this mica powder. I had was previously working with the alcohol inks, but I found that the alcohol inks uh, fade after a while. I used it on my butterfly uh, video. I don't know if you saw that, my butterfly project. And the glass, uh, the color of the glass started to fade even after I put the resin on it. So I was really disappointed with that. So um, I'm going to work with this mica powder from now on. And then I use the kitchen torch to get rid of the bubbles. Now, I guess you probably really wouldn't see the bubbles anyway because uh, they're on the back side. Um, and I did not fill these all the way up to the top because I was going to use these for, um, I figured I'm going to use them to put on canvas or glass or something. So I didn't want them too, too tall. So anyway, after that, I just let them dry overnight on a flat surface, and it's supposed to be between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. After they had dried overnight, I started taking them out, and I didn't realize when I was originally making this that they would not be shiny. So you can see the back side is shiny, but when you have a mold that's not shiny on the inside, the, whatever you put in there will not be shiny. So you actually have to put resin over the top of it to make it shiny. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how it is. So anyway, so the ones to the right are all the ones with the um, acrylic paint. And you can see how bright all the colors are on it, the painted colors. And then the ones on the left, some of them are kind of bright, but they're um, 
it's not real even. It was harder to get that mica powder and it kind of uh, spread out and um, moved around in there. It's just not as bright as the acrylic paint. Anyway, so I put the eggs on top, ended up putting them back on top of the original um, egg trays, egg molds, and put a little, just spread a tiny bit of resin over the top of them all so that they would be shiny. And um, I did this with both the painted ones and the ones with the mica powder and then I let them dry overnight. So then I decided I'll use the eggs for the bunny rabbit, the Easter bunny. I thought it would make it look more Eastery. So anyway I arranged the eggs on there and then I mixed up some resin and this time I used clear cast resin and I've already explained with the eggs how I mix the resin. So after I was done mixing it, I just started putting it all over the bunny and the eggs to make sure the eggs held um, really well. Now the bunny rabbit was put together with Elmer's glue, so I think that's going to hold good, but um, I just went ahead and covered everything with it to make it shiny. And I have a tendency to use too much resin, mix up too much resin all the time, but I just went ahead and used it all and put it on the project. Then I got out my little uh, kitchen torch to get out all the bubbles, and before I knew it, I was done. And then I used the bottle of rubbing al alcohol on a little bit of paper towel to wipe up the frame a little bit. So then I walked out of the room for a minute and decided to change the arrangement of the eggs. I came back in and moved them around. So <laughs> anyway, I think he looks a little bit cuter like that. What do you guys think? Hi everyone. So I hope you like the Easter Bunny. So when I first got finished putting him down, he was so white, it made this frame even look yellower, I thought. So that's how, why I ended up putting the pink on there. I really didn't know what else to do. I guess I could have painted it all white. So I don't know what would you guys have done. And um, so this entire bunny was originally held down with just Elmer's glue. And I did do resin on the feet to start with. I'm not really sure why I did that. And that actually could have been glued down also. So you could have actually done, or I could have actually done the entire project with just glue, not using any resin at all. But um, I did use, end up using the resin on it. So I think he turned out real cute. The eggs, I found the best way I thought to get in the crevices with the different colors was with the acrylic paint. And I did do some more eggs after that. And instead of just using the powdery mica powder, I mixed it in the resin and then drew it up with this little syringe thing and um, tried to put it in the crevices, but that still didn't work as well as the acrylic paint. So my suggestion would be to use the acrylic paint. And um, the other thing is, so the whole back was done with, with, well, first of all, this entire back was with Elmer's glue. And you can see, you can't see the Elmer's glue at all. I don't know if you can see that. And of course, around the edges, you cannot see the Elmer's glue at all. Whereas if I, if I had used the silicone, you would see a little bit of it when you turned around the back. But um, see how clear that is. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up or a like. That helps the channel. And if you want to see future videos, go ahead and subscribe. Have a great day.